Hey, I'm Chris Crummett, and today I'm going to show you some of the presets from my Control Hub expansion pack and how I would use them in a mix. I'm just going to go into my plugins folder here and get an instance of Control Hub, and we're starting with the kick drum. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the Artist Packs, I'm gonna go to Mine, I'm gonna go to Drums here, and I'm gonna look through these different kick drum settings, and I am, let's just start with this one. This one's real simple. It's just like a five API 560B emulation. So let me turn it off for a second. This is what the kick drum sounds like by itself. just the inside mic. Um, this is a session that I did for a band called Burn Mona Lisa. Um, and it's not a bad sounding kick on its own, but it's, it's definitely pretty raw. So we'll turn on Control Hub here. Like, it's so much better. You hear how much better that sounds instantly. Let's, uh, let's try this one with tape here. This is a pretty cool setting. It's got my ATR-102 to go into the tape machine. It's uh, definitely more aggressive. I like that. Let's try this one. That, that one was at 15 ips. This is at 30 ips. It's pretty aggressive. It's not quite what I want for this kick drum. Let's try this Poltec setting that uh See, it still sounds natural, but it's like so much big, bigger and punchier. Uh, that's way cooler. So let's stick with that for now. I might go back to that 561, but we're just going to roll with that. We're going to keep this mix a bit simple too. So let's go to the snare. I like starting with drums, kind of go from the bottom to the top. Uh, let's bring up another control hub. We'll select a snare setting. A lot of these cool 5500 ones, but I actually really like this Focusrite 315. This is my, uh, this is actually like my mastering chain, but on snare, uh, and it sounds really cool. So let's hear the snare without it. Here's with Control Hub on. That one's pretty cool. Let me hear one other setting. Let's hear. Not every setting is exactly what you want for each drum, but uh, I was working on something yesterday where that setting was perfect. Let's hear the 5500 into the Distressor. Yeah, you can hear how much better that sounds on. See right here, we're just doing a, just a little bit of compression. About negative four dB. Now it's still like a little dark for me, so I'm gonna go and give it a little more high end with the EQ in here. Oh, that's the low end. Some of these I've I've like set up personally just to do a little compensation um, beforehand. You'll see that when you get the pack. But you know, every instrument, every track needs a little bit of tweaking. how much better that sounds on. Now we'll go uh, go to the overheads here and overheads. What overhead one do I want to use? Let's do, um, let's just experiment here. Let's hear what, oh, this is cool. This is actually from uh, the Sleeping with Sirens record I did a long time ago. Uh, this was the chain that I was using on uh, overheads for let's cheers to this. Sounds pretty cool instantly. I guess I should have shown you what they sounded like on their own. Here's uh, the overheads with no control hub. And then 
control hub on. That one's good, but I think I want something with a little more scoop. This one sounds the best to me right now, and I'm gonna take a little bit more mids out of that. Let's put this pre-EQ on, and let's just try 1K, and let's make the Q a little bit tighter, and then I'm gonna cut about 2 dB and see what that sounds like. crazy right it's so much better with it on uh so that was just the overheads and that's uh that chain is the uh my terry ceq uh, which is kind of a rare analog eq that i use for mastering a lot into um the nif very moo 2 tube compressor and then into my lavery golds with the the lavery golds have a soft saturation feature and I, we've uh we've modeled that so um, all that together makes for great overheads. Let's throw this kick and snare back in there. Okay, I like this, but I think now that I'm hearing everything, I wanna go back to that API 550 setting. Either that or tweak this one. Let me find, it's the hard hitter setting. No, I think I'm I think I like that other one a little better. Let's try the pull tech with the tape. How's that sound? That's cool. Let's just pull a little bit of like 250 out of that. There we go. Cool, so let me add a little high end to this too. The Q's a little wide. The cool thing about this is that I can actually just drag the EQ around here too. And if I right click, I can actually adjust the Q by going up and down. sounding cool to me let's uh let's hear what those that's just uh kick overhead and snare that's control hub on and then this is control hub off and then let's do get some room mics in here Turn them way up so you can really hear them. And we're gonna put another control hub on. Let's check out a few. I wanna show you how cool the Room Cruncher one is, but also let's just hear some more standard sounding ones. Here's another uh, Terry. Actually, let's do the Massive Passive into the fat. So this is a cool sound. It's the Manly Massive Passive 2BQ into the Empirical Labs fat. So. Hear how well it clears out that mid range and doesn't make it like too scooped sounding, but um, definitely gives it more life. Way, way bigger sounding with control hub on. Now I'm gonna do a little high pass because just the way this was mic'd, we're getting a little too much kick drum with this setting in the room mic.
sounding pretty cool to me. I'm gonna mute that one and open up another one, or I'm gonna make it inactive, that control hub. And I'm gonna open up another one and show you this uh, drum cruncher, room cruncher setting that I made that I really like for room mics too. Rooms cruncher. So obviously it's a little over the top. I mean, that's a cool effect. You could definitely use that, but it's a little over the top for standard stuff. So let's bring the mix back. The mix controls on the bottom right side here. And again, because the way I tracked this, the kick drum is really loud in the room mic. So we're gonna do another high pass filter. Put it a little bit higher for this cruncher setting. Hear how that brings the mids forward in the room. And you can mess with all the settings on that too and dial it in even cooler. Let's actually put that after the other setting I had going, the uh, massive, passive, and fatso. I'm actually using two instances of uh, control hub in a row on the room mics and you can hear the cruncher just brings a little more life into the room mics. It's it's pretty cool and, and some scenarios it's gonna be cooler than others, but I, I like how that sounds. It's giving me a little more life. And obviously you heard when I turned all the control hubs off and back on, like the, the difference is massive. So let's bring the bass guitar into this. Well, that's just a DI. It does not sound very cool. So let's go, uh, Let's cross pollinate here in the <laughs> jazz bass ones to the end here. Sounds good to me. STL products are so quick. All right, so let's go back to Control Hub. So I'm kind of simplistic when it comes to base uh, hardware, like post-processing. So I've got a few options here that are um, gonna be really helpful and uh, pretty tweakable within each of them. So even though it looks like it's only four options, it's uh, there's a lot of things you can do within them. Just got a nice compression. The chain that was used for this setting was the my one of my BAE 1073s into the Empirical Labs Fatso and then into the NIF Verimu 2. Uh, and you can hear how this chain um, just like totally brings the bass forward and really adds a lot of control and the low end doesn't go away while you're doing all that. Um, the, the other thing I really like about Control Hub is the limiter section. Um, you know, I, uh, in the past I might've used a different limiter after my hardware for bass, same with vocals, same with some other stuff, but uh, with Control Hub, it's kind of all in one, like this limiter, like even if I was using hardware, I'd probably use this limiter. So that's all sounding pretty good. Let's uh, check out these guitars. Bring these down just a little bit. And I like these guitars. I don't think they really need any 
single channel processing, but I'm gonna put a control hub on the guitar bus. And this is, a lot of times I don't really do a lot of processing on, on single guitar channels. Um, if you've ever seen my other stuff, you know this is true. Um, but guitar bus, it's nice to add a little shape. So one cool thing is we have these settings in control hub called individual models. And I've made all these different curves with different EQs and we've saturated some of the tube compressors without the compression on. It's kind of like a uh, tone shaping, um, vibe shaping uh, starting points. So good, good tone shaping starting points for different buses or single tracks or anything. But let's see, let's check out mids plus lows for this these 1073 settings for guitar bus. That's just like um, the, the low shelf on uh, 1073 bo boosted at 220. And then the mids at um, the 700 frequency boosted on the 1073. And that's a, I actually use that a lot while tracking guitars. I might have even used that on these. Um, that's a setting that I like because it kind of like scoops out the low mids just a little bit and it dampens some of the fizzy high frequencies in the guitars. Um, it's like one of my favorite tricks to do with the 1073. It's honestly why I own the 1073 is that shape. But Control Hub has done a great job of. Um, matching that and, and emulating that. So um, I can use this now and you can hear how much more 3D the guitars sound when I turn this on. The one thing I'm gonna do though, is just cause it's adding a little too much bass in the low, low frequencies for this guitar. I think he's using a Strat too. So there's a lot of like loose, low frequencies. There's so much, I mean, I could go deeper into that, but even just turning it on and cutting some of that low end, like that sounds so much better. It's so much more uh, interesting and, and textural than, than when it's off. Like the guitar sounded pretty blah with it off and then you turn it on and you've got awesome sudden 3D guitars. So now let's go back to the drum bus real quick. Now that I've got a little more in the mix and uh, we're gonna go to all the drum tracks or tracks to one drum bus and so we're going to throw another control hub on that so let's go to individual models and let's do some 911 at 15 nips with the terry let's see what that gets us <laughs> I like how it's bringing everything forward. Let's just pull a little bit of low end or a little bit of high end out of it. Let's do a shelf at like 8K. I'm just gonna do like one dB and then let's go to like 600 and do a low shelf from 600 down. We'll add a little meat. I'm liking it. So let's zoom on over to vocals. For coming down, not for dawn before it's dark. Winter always feels so. It's not bad. Well, you know, we use a nice mic and everything. And I did do some compression on the way in. So obviously, you can uh, tell it's not totally dry. 
Um, and some of these settings are great for vocals that were tracked with nothing, tracked with bad mics and no compression. And some of them are great with uh, stuff that's tracked on a great mic with, with great compression. Let's try this one. This is the 315 into the very middle. Build the snow for coming down. Not for dawn before it's dark. We... I keep making this face, but I just have to make it because it's so ridiculous how much better it sounds when we turn this thing on. And it's the same face I make when I set up my analog stuff and turn it on too. But this is just a plugin and I'm literally just clicking it and it's there and I don't have to power anything up or plug anything in. It's pretty cool. Build the snowfall coming down Not for dawn before it's dark Winter always feels so long It's just like way silkier top end. The mids are clearer. It's not necessarily scooped, but you know, it's just got that clearer, more uh, 3D mid and the silky smooth top end. So I'm gonna, I just drug the same thing over to this other vocal since they kind of go back and forth. The Snowfall coming down Not for dawn before it's dark Winter always feels so and Then listen to this, that other vocal without control hub on it Felt the snowfall coming down Not for dawn before it's dark Yeah, just so much more control, so much cooler And again, I'm, I'm these presets actually have the, the limiter turned on in control hub Because I thought it was perfect for the vocal settings so we're just gonna keep the vocal soloed for a minute. I like that sound. I could mess around with it. I could go through a bunch of different presets, but honestly, that turned out pretty freaking cool to me. So let's send a vocal verb, vocal verb one, and you could probably guess what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a control hub on it. Effects, let's see, vocal, Back of the room, there's some different vocal effects in here. What do we want? Short clear verb? Let's hear short clear verb. Not for dawn before it's dark. But winter always feels so long. It's long enough that you, you feel that push and pull of expectation. You disconnect. And what's cool about the effects is this is actually built around one of the, uh, traced hardware chains. It's not actually just like a reverb or like some settings I messed with in a reverb. The basic tone of it is actually like one of my hardware setups. And then I've tweaked the settings and added the reverb to it um, to make like a really specific cool reverb sound that you're not gonna get anywhere else because it, it's built on top of uh, one of my other settings. So let's throw a little delay on that too. Another control hub. Let's go to uh, here. This one's called Chorus Hook Delay. So let's throw that on. And I have these with the mix set at 100% because usually when I use time-based effects like reverb or delay, um, I am running them on an aux track. So I'm mixing them in there. But if you wanted to put these on your normal track or like use them on a guitar track or something, you can just put them on and then turn the mix down and get your balance that way. But all these are going to come with the mix 100% up. Snowfall. Oh, let's do a send real quick to vocal delay one. Here we go. Snowfall coming down. Not for dawn before it's dark. Winter always feels so long. It's long enough that you, you feel that push and pull of expectation. You disconnect yourself before you lose control. Winter always feels so long. It's a pretty cool delay. Felt the snowfall coming down. Let me shorten a little bit for this. Uh... Just turn the feedback down a little bit. Felt the snowfall coming down. Not for dawn before it's dark. But winter always feels so long. It's long enough that you, you feel that push and pull of expectation. You disconnect yourself before you lose control. But winter always feel so just a nice little addition create some space between the vocal sections the 
Definitely getting there. I feel like the vocals could actually, now that I hear the vocals with the music, I feel like they could use a little more control hub. No, uh, well, yeah, but uh, a little more air and a little less low end and maybe just a little more compression. So I like what we have on the channel. So I'm gonna go back and go to the mix bus. And I'm going to use one of the mix bus settings actually on vocals. And I'm going to, let's do this uh, C1 setting. This is pretty good. And then I'll use this EQ to just pull out a little bit of low end, probably around 300 and down and then add a little bit of air. sounded cool but I'm realizing that it's messing with the compression a little bit so what's cool is there's a pre EQ and a post EQ on this and I'm gonna I was using the post EQ after the compression but I'm actually gonna use the EQ before the compression instead and do about the same thing 6k I'll do 2 dB since it's gonna get knocked down a little bit and then let's pull out a shelf at, let's start at 200 and hear it. and we'll just use that same control hub setting. Sounding pretty cool. Let's hear, let's go back and hear what all this sounds like with no control hub on it. I have a feeling it's gonna be comical. That's not a mix. That's not even a rough mix. I would be sad if that was the rough mix. And then here's everything with just control hub on it. And that's not even me going in deep with Control Hub. That's just like super, super simple stuff. And then last but not least, let's throw, let's throw one more Control Hub on the mix bus. And mine, here's a master bus setting with the NIF Soma. It's a 2BQ that's awesome sounding into my NIF Verimu 2 into a prism converter. So we are going to, for now, turn the output of the plugin down because that's the best way to not blast you guys. But normally you'd put it all the way up so you could have it because if it's a master, you know, you want about like negative 0.1 or negative 0.2 like it is on the limiter. Here, 
how that clears things up, it's really crazy. It clears things up just like my analog chain does. Control hub on the master bus off. Control hub on the master bus back on. It's a lot cooler and both of those versions were with all the control hubs on. Let's do one more full control hub off and back on. Here's with all the control hubs off. And then here it is with all the control hubs back on, including the master bus. That's pretty insane for one plugin. Imagine what you could do with that if you spent a little time with it.